It's almost like a joke. Just last week, we were informed that SpaceX had successfully completed all the required FAA corrective actions to secure approval for Starship's second launch. This was incredibly encouraging news, hinting that the company might obtain a launch license in a matter of weeks or even days. However, a few days later, additional information from the FAA suggested that the launch might not happen until at least October. Then yesterday, in another FAA email sent to the concerned party, we learned Starship is a big problem with the FAA. And, well, it seems that Starship will not fly in the near future. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. SpaceX has been pushing to again launch the nearly 400-foot-tall Starship from its site along the Gulf Coast near Brownsville after its first flight in April ended in an explosion. While the hardware is ready, the company still needs to obtain an FAA-modified launch license. SpaceX must obtain a modified license from the FAA that addresses all safety, environmental, and other regulatory requirements prior to the next Starship launch. The FAA is optimistic it may complete the safety review of the license application by the end of October. The FAA said the license modification evaluation includes, as appropriate, an FAA review of SpaceX submitted information on policy, payload, safety, airspace, integration, financial responsibility, and environmental impacts. FAA Administrator Polly Trottenberg on Wednesday also confirmed that the agency and SpaceX had been in good discussions about the licensing process. Teams are working together and I think we're optimistic sometime next month, she said during a conference in Washington, D.C. The agency has 190 days to wrap its review, she said. I don't think it'll take them that long. I don't want to speak for them. That's their piece of it. Regardless, only two days later, in an update, the FAA declared they would have to review new environmental information, including changes to the launch pad and proposed vehicle modifications. A written re-evaluation of the programmatic environmental assessment is also mentioned, suggesting a modified assessment might be necessary. In fact, if the FAA wants another PEA, Maybe next spring for Ship 25 and Booster 9 flights? Besides, the email also mentions consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which is new and could affect the timeline. For this, Starship seems a big problem for the FAA. In fact, the FAA faces a lawsuit over SpaceX's damage to the local environment. The FAA will now have to be extremely cautious with another Starship launch. Politicians and bureaucrats like to be able to say they have listened to people's concerns and are diligent, and they don't really care about delays or cost overruns, especially when they are happening to a private company. That's why you see things like the California high-speed rail significantly scaled back, starting 10 years late and $100 billion over budget before any lawsuits have even been filed. Oh, this is why Elon Musk called FAA rocket launch regulations broken. He even tweeted, unlike its aircraft division, which is fine, the FAA space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. Their rules are meant for a handful of expendable launches per year from a few government facilities. Under those rules, humanity will never get to Mars. This means the FAA's regulations for space launches and rocket testing don't fit today's reality. The complex process is meant to enforce safety rules for the days when rockets were launched only a few times a year, and not an aggressive program like SpaceX's Starship. Being a test, it was expected that things would go wrong, but the FAA doesn't see it that way. That may be why Musk says the current rules were meant for a handful of expendable launches, as an expendable rocket wouldn't ever have a landing problem in testing because they don't land at all. Instead of being able to accept that the fireball was a successful test that gave SpaceX data to improve the design and operating procedures, current rules require them to treat it like an accident that must be investigated. What this shows us about the FAA. 
It's clear that lawmakers and the bureaucracy itself need reform. Technology moves fast, and we need the agency to actually do the job that voters and their representatives gave them. It is supposed to be making sure that air operations are safe and shouldn't be stuck in regulatory and legal molasses. Even on issues that Congress gave full authority to the agency for, there's a culture of careful consideration which we need that isn't tempered with common sense. It's common for federal regulators of all kinds to be behind the times and a big pain to deal with, so this isn't a problem that the FAA exclusively deals with. Much of it isn't the fault of any individual administrator, regulator, lawyer, or official. They're all stuck in a bad system that keeps the agency from doing its job. If it was all trivial, this wouldn't be a big deal, but new technologies save lives. When we can't save lives with new technologies because foggy at the federal government is mired down by a plethora of conflicting and outdated rules, real people are hurt needlessly. Perhaps Congress should pass a law creating a common sense department in each regulatory agency that regulated businesses and hobbyists can contact to get bad or outdated rules a quick review. This department could be empowered to issue temporary rule changes for each situation they find lacking common sense, and those temporary rules apply until the normal regulatory process can incorporate the changes. If something like that could happen, space companies could get things done, and the public would be safer as a result. After all, citing a tweet from a Twitter account, other countries would give an arm and a leg to have a company that is as disruptive and ambitious as SpaceX. I am not saying skirt the rules, but guffed agencies should show some excitement at what is about to happen. Be eager to participate in once in a generation event. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.